What is going on, everybody, and welcome to week nine of EGF Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. If you're just joining us here on the channel, you have missed three of the most intense games of Smash I think we have ever seen. No, I'm obviously joking. We ended up not having three of our four games here tonight due to um, just circumstances with the weather and some uncoordinated schedules. But moving forward, I am Sepulance, joined here by South Beach Flame to play our first and unfortunately our last series of the evening, Wichita State University versus Mississippi State University. Yep, we got a great matchup between two really good, five really good players, for, and we're we're hoping to get a really good matchup between both of them. Yeah, absolutely. We are looking at two schools that have made relative names for themselves. We definitely recognize these names, and I'm sure we'll recognize some of these players. We're going to start off very soon here, running a couple of minutes behind, a couple technical errors here, and as we mentioned, a couple of errors with the school happening on earlier today. This is now this um excuse me the spring split off of the fall split, and now we are introducing one more character to the roster. That's of course Sephiroth from Final Fantasy was introduced into the game since the fall. Oh my goodness, since the fall split, excuse me, and now we will see him here in the spring split. The question is, South Beach, do you think we're going to see any players actually bringing out Sephiroth today? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see him. Sephiroth has really good special attacks as well as some pretty good smash attacks too. He's got really great range with his, uh, excuse me, his side tilt, and then obviously that lethal up air is going to be a really big difference if anyone uses Sephiroth tonight. Yeah, that up air is... a dastardly one if i have ever seen it a terrifying ability in the game and one that not a lot of other characters have as large a radius with their up air as sephiroth does kind of notorious for that new introduction of serious range with that sword arguably the longest range sword fighter depending on how you look at it moving forward you know we see characters introduced into the game we don't see them played very often we don't see a lot of steve we don't see a lot of min min obviously i don't think i've seen anybody play her since she came out but these dlc characters you know you don't see them in these tournament brackets very often you'd rather see these players sticking to characters they've been able to play for hundreds if not thousands of hours exactly and let's just say how we want to say it. the best characters in the game you rather see people stick with characters like mario or uh lucina lucina is one of the best characters in the game um these guys are good all-around characters to use and we'll probably see some of those characters being used today yeah Absolutely. Um, like you said, I think Mario, we see him a lot. We see a couple of Game & Watches here and there. I don't think either of these schools have a Game & Watch player on the roster, but I know those folks are buried in there one way or another. Right now, coming up, we have N-City from Wichita State University versus Apparatus from Mississippi State University. We're getting them in lobby now, and they'll be here on screen for you guys in just a moment. But while we're here, I mean, this is really the spring split starts today. This is week nine. I mean, well, you know, it started yesterday with FIFA, but the Smash division does start here today with week nine, and I'm very excited to see what these players have to offer what these teams have to offer and maybe somebody's going to be busting out not only a new character but maybe a new team is going to be able to climb the ranks like we haven't seen before exactly and obviously with you know covid happening uh some of these schools had an extra long break so we could very well much see some new characters that we haven't seen any of these uh players use at all so they have who knows how much time they had practicing with these characters and how much skill they developed so this is going to be an interesting matchup to see because we don't really know what exactly we're predicting in with these matchups and these characters. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who don't know, this is a best of five series, but each of the teams will be playing best of threes. So there will be five different sets of best of threes. All 10 players, five on each team, will get to showcase their talents and their abilities here tonight. And there's a couple of weird rules with the point system, but it is quite easy to catch on to. You get a certain amount of points for winning and then extra points depending on how many lives you had left. But as you watch, you'll be able to understand that a little bit more. And if you're just joining us, welcome to EGF, that SSBU division. We've got a whole bunch of games almost every single day of the week. We've got League of Legends. Overwatch, Rocket League, FIFA, and I mean, there is just, the list goes on and on and on. Right now, you've caught us in the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Division, and we could not be more excited to kick things off. As you know, we were supposed to kick things off, I mean, four hours ago at this point, but due to error after error after Blizzard wiping out half of the country, we were <laughs> unable to have a lot of our players and teams here today. But like I said, we've got Wichita State and Mississippi State coming up for you any minute here. Yep, so just stick around and also make sure to just watch whatever games we got. We got Rocket League tomorrow. I'll also be doing that. So, hey, you might as well watch me and also watch Septilens because, man, he's good. Thank you, brother. Yeah, we are all over the place. It is going to be a whole week. You would see me normally on Rocket League, but I'm not there tomorrow. I've got something else. Thursday, I'll be here for the Overwatch, and I'll be here, I'm sure, pretty much every Tuesday for the Smash Brothers Ultimate Division, something that I adore. I'm a huge fan of this game, even though I am pretty bad at it myself. I mean, 
Uh, you're talking to a king DDD main. I'm t <laughs> like, I'm, I'm as slow as I can get. And I'll tell you what, I have break broken a few controllers here and there <laughs> struggling in this game. It's definitely a frustrating game. So you're not the only one in there. Something. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you folks at home are stoked to hear that your game is being commentated by not only a King DDD player, but a Pac-Man player off the back of that. So we yeah. are, um, we, we play the niche ones. That's why part of the reason I'm such a huge fan of Mr. Game & Watch. He's a character that you don't see very often, but when played at that highest level, with that highest possibility, he is a terrifying person to go up against. Absolutely love seeing people bust out those characters that are maybe not meta, so to speak. Exactly. In Game & Watch, he's one of those characters, basically an all-around character. He character he's fast he's got some pretty good counters some pretty good side tilt smashes all of those things so he's definitely a threat on the on the battlefield so you better watch out for him yeah absolutely and realistically you mentioned this a little bit already the characters you're probably a little more likely to see today lucina mario maybe a captain falcon if somebody's feeling cheeky ness perhaps you know there's characters that are expected to see in these tournament settings in these tournament brackets um fox would be another one there's specific characters you know there's a hundred something characters in the game or you know close to it but it's something that you expect to see the same characters kind of rearing their heads maybe terry maybe joker and hero so as well you know min min and steve and sephiroth might not be getting tournament gameplay i mean joker at this point is almost a staple for tournament life yeah he's basically a top five character in my opinion that a lot of people use yeah. um another character you might see you know, you mentioned you also mentioned like Terry um, and Fox. Those guys pull off ridiculous combos, and yeah. don't be surprised if we see some ridiculous combos tonight. Yeah, there's um, some input cancellation combos from Terry that do like seventy percent within certain within. I mean, seeming seconds. But we're finally going to move in here. We've got Apparatus versus N City once again. Wichita State versus Mississippi. <laughs> and now we are going to go Rob versus Palutena. Palutena, definitely one we forgot to mention. She is all over the tournament roster. Exactly, and also Rob too. And again, one of those all players. Good range with his laser. And then also we always see his little, uh, obviously he's sticking to some neutral attacks, but get ready for his down special because we might see that here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And he's got that gyro out as well, trying to play it off the ledge. And while you might be used to seeing Rob's play near ledge or off map, it looks like we're going to see NCD try to hover near the middle. That may be intentional going up against the Palutena as well. Her air game isn't perhaps as good. She's definitely a lot sneakier. and can get away a lot faster. So if NCD forces Apparatus to constantly move to this middle ground here, they do get a little bit of value off the back. I mean, these neutral moves really doing the work here for NCD. Apparatus already 100%. NCD just now topping 40. Exactly. And one thing you want to be careful with Palutena, she's got some range attacks too. Her side special, her neutral special, they can get some range on you. So you better be watch yeah. out, watching out for those. Absolutely, we got to be watching out for the side air coming out very quickly from NCD, a phenomenal shot as well. Going to put them up in a stock here and all this extra credit now going to come pouring out. Just dumping already almost 20% in, only 70% themselves up to 40. And right now, NCD takes what was starting off as a close game and absolutely runs with it, now lapping apparatus in stock percentage here. I'll tell you what, NCD, he was starting out slow and now he's basically taking over the game. Going back to that absolutely. previous stock, he uh, basically caught Palutina at the right time, catch, catch her with that uh what's it called the back air the back air yeah the back air definitely coming in clutch there rob's back air terrifying not only is the hitbox kind of gigantic but rob himself does quite a lot of damage with that now we see nc definitely playing a predictive play style and that's something that you see coming out from the players that usually come out on top of matchups like this a phenomenal tech coming out from app wait the names have swapped at the bottom of apparatus i believe is now our rob player so it looks like the names may have been wrong to start off with so i apologize excuse everything we set up to that point anyway this rob no matter what their name is no matter what school they are absolutely <laughs> dominating the game three stocks right now up against one one stock entity now on that Palutena, so excuse that confusion earlier on. But right now, I mean, if Apparatus secures a three stock this early on in the matchup, that's going to be some free points for Mississippi State. Exactly. And Palutena here, she needs to get some, she needs to get some something going on for her right now because right now NCD's making all the moves right now. Yeah. Absolutely, and this Palutena definitely putting in the work and finding 96% now in their final stock. They're going to have to find three eliminations onto Apparatus if they have any hope of turning this around. Exactly, and it looks like she's getting into work right now. Oh, that could have been it right there. 
Oh, but oh. that's going to be it. A phenomenal spike coming out from Apparatus. That down air, a terrifying thing to go up against. That's going to be a three stock, I believe. I didn't catch the very end there. I was fixing something technical on my end. But all of a sudden, we see this Rob coming through. And like you said, a slow burn at the start. But all of a sudden, just blink and you miss it. All three stocks down the drain for Mississippi State's Apparatus. Exactly. And I was also fixing some technical difficulties. But as just right when I got in, I just saw that spike. And I'll tell you what. One thing NCD was doing really well was getting Palutena, sorry, apparatus right onto the ledge where he can just yeah. either work on those spikes as we saw and as again, that back air. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Rob, a character a lot of people were very unfamiliar with, kind of introduced into the game as a meme character or a type of kind of a joke character. But all of a sudden, Smash Ultimate, he was reworked a little bit. His damage and his move set was tweaked just oh, yeah. a bit to where he's really become kind of a terrifying thing to go up against. Exactly. I'm always afraid of going. I did. I like I only lost to Rob and like the second the first player I played lost three stocks and then I advanced a little bit and then I played another Rob three stock. That's all I get with Rob. So if I played N City, he would if we were playing a five stock, he would stock me. He would sweep me. Let's just face it. So apparatus, oh, what? Battlefield. Yeah. Here we go. What Palatina needs to do is control the middle ground this time. This way she can stay, because Rob is trying to get her into the, uh, onto the ledge. Yeah, absolutely. And the ledge is definitely where we've seen they want to have this person. Now we see Apparatus back on that Rob, back to that comfort zone, and NCD sticking to that Palutena as well. So it's definitely a high value kind of low risk, high reward scenario. But we see a lot of percentage already being dumped onto Apparatus. That's seemingly more than NCD was able to get in that first game at all. Exactly. Yeah, and right now, moving forward, we're going to be able to see the Apparatus and Entity, the, the percentages just piling up. This Rob taking advantage of those ledges once again, forcing this Palutena to fall exactly where he wants her. And now mm -hmm. the recovery just barely making it back. The Gyro goes for the down air once again, but unable to find it. Entity a little bit more ready for it this time. Yeah, Entity was a little late trying to get to that spike, but Palutena just quickly got to the ledge before Entity could do anything about it. Yeah, we see some serious aggression coming through. Rob able to find and clean up an extra stock here. Now the extra credit coming through. 56% for them, but now if they can get Entity higher than that, this stock will all be worth it. They can really start to take those high risk, high reward options because losing this stock doesn't put them at a loss. It really just puts them in a tied up scenario. Exactly. And, and now we see Rob working the aerial game a little bit, going for the, the side air. So Palatina needs to figure out a way to just get in get him down to the ground and cause some damage. We need to see more of specials probably. Yeah, I definitely agree. We're seeing a lot of neutral attacks coming out from this Rob, and that's definitely a safe option. It's a way to keep yourself in check and keep a coherent option open constantly. But right now, we just see that maybe they're starting to pay for it a little bit more. NCD or this Palutena player now getting hyper-aggressive. They know they need to get rid of this stock soon because they're already up to 100% on their second. So this Rob right now has plenty of time and plenty of room to get hyper-aggressive against this Palutena player. Yeah, definitely Rob has dominated the game, and finally we get a stock on That was a pretty good move by, by Apparatus. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're seeing some great aggression coming through here. Apparatus now getting hyper-aggressive. Now this is going to be two to two stocks, 150 for this Paul Lutana player, and only 30 on this Bob player, Rob player here, excuse me. So now we're going to see this aggression coming through very, very quickly. Entity versus Apparatus, folks. If you're just joining us, Wichita State versus Mississippi State. This is the second game. Mississippi State able to secure that first one. Looking to clean up the second one. This is only a best of three. So if Rob walks away victorious, this series will already be over. We will move on to our next set of players. Exactly. And we just watched Apparatus get another stock lost. And what he needs to do more is stick to the counter game. Because Palatina does have a counter. And this is at the point where both teams are going pretty aggressive. So you can catch him off. You should counter. Yeah, I definitely think this Paul Lutena player is looking to play close quarters a lot more than they should be. She's got some things coming through. She's got those aerials and those long distance abilities that she is starting to take advantage of a little bit more. We see that maybe working out at the end of the day, but now it's going to be zero to zero. Entity, Wichita State really trying to bring the second game back because if they don't, they're going to have to lose this first matchup. Exactly. We need to, they need to close it out. 
quickly because now Palutena is getting really hot against this Rob. Yeah, I mean, we see the percentages now. We're down to three stocks. I mean, two stocks Ooh. gone for each, but Rob going to walk it off the map. Phenomenal aerial and Encity, Wichita State had nowhere to run. That's going to be a cleanup crew if I've ever seen one. Rob with that 2-0 victory over this Palutena. That was a clean, clean combo at the very end. Just catching her out of the ledge with the side the side special. Yeah, absolutely. The side special coming out. And after the gyro, I mean, the side special walked it all the way off map. And the knockback hardly mattered as they were already in that kill box there. They had already left the side of the map. And just a phenomenal shot overall. Exactly. And Palutina just had no chance of escaping. Just absolutely no chance. Because Rob was just basically controlling the ledge and even the middle ground at times but mostly it was that ledge game ledge game yep. where he got all those stocks yeah definitely the beginning of the first game i even commented on how weird it was this rob player was playing middle stage in the mid ground so often and then all of a sudden he just took it and ran with it started playing ledge after ledge finding elimination after elimination at the end of the day it worked out this meme character this joke character really something to tear to be scared of in these matchups like this exactly you got to watch out for these meme characters because you can make fun of them all but it, at the end of the day, they, the players that use them, they know how to use them, and they'll catch you off. So never, never make fun of them. Yeah, absolutely. These players, a force to be reckoned with. And just like that, that first matchup is going to be over. A phenomenal look so far for Mississippi State. They've put themselves up five points already. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with two new players. So don't go far. We've got plenty of smash left.